Right, guys, before we get into this video, I've lowered the price of all the ebooks, uh, courses, and whatever. There's just, there's, there's no reason you don't, I don't have to pay for them. Do you know what I mean? They've already paid for themselves. So there's no reason to keep them. The price that they were, I might as well drop them because all the other products are coming down too. I've been able to drop all the physical products because I've been able to order at scale, which, you know, thank you guys. I really appreciate that because it means that my long term plan, some of you will remember, I had to up the prices so that we could make a certain amount of money so that we could stock them at scale so I could then bring down the prices. We've done that now. So thank you so much. Um, the natural diuretic has come down to four ninety nine because I just want to I want to get rid of this now. This product is going. This product is ceasing to exist very soon. This is the last time we're going to do it because we're going to do a skin supplement combined with the natural diuretic, which makes so much more sense, right? So it's four ninety nine for one of these, which is less than what I pay to make each unit. Um, we've only got like four or five hundred of them left, so you know I assume they'll be gone in the next week. Uh, the Lifestyle Supplement, $16.99. I want it cheaper, but I've got VAT now, guys. Nothing I can do, but it gives me a 50-60% profit margin, so everyone's a winner. Uh, $16.99 as well for the Testosterone Booster. It's close. The Lifestyle Supplement, all that is our best seller now. Uh, $12.99 for the Body Wash. I've got like four in my cupboard. I love that Body Wash. It's the only one that doesn't make me itch because it's natural, it's testosterone friendly. And I've dropped this to $2.99. It's just too valuable, the information. I only pay £1.60 for each one to get them made. So two ninety nine. dollars it's a great deal for everybody. Eases the cost of the shipping as well. So that's that. Secondly, I'm looking for a potential full-time coder for the streaming platform. So send your CVs in. Send your CVs in, guys, to firstman at chrisdermy.com. Uh, I will go through all of them because I'm deadly serious about this, okay? I might stay with the company that I'm currently with or I might have a full-time employee who can work with me every single day and whatnot, which would be, I think at this point, would be wildly beneficial to what we're trying to do, make agile changes on the fly. Um, I can talk to them directly. There's no chain of command. You know, I can just get on the phone with that individual, meet them in person, show them physically what I want changed, what we need to do moving forward. Is this possible? How much is this going to cost? you know, these sort of things. And it will be nice to, you know, that person will be going on holiday with us, making changes, uploading stuff in real time. Show, do you know what I mean? So it's going to be a cool lifestyle. So send your CVs if you're a coder, if you think you could work on the stream platform. So now let's jump into the video, guys. It's going to be a good one, I promise. So guys, I'm 31 years old now. Most of the people that I grew up with, are, you know, that I was friends with a minimum 30 years old. Um... I had a bunch of older friends is mainly from like football and stuff and a lot of them are either 40 or approaching 40 and you know there's 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 one thing that I can see it's um it's predominant and it's this isn't a prediction anymore you know when I told you guys about like the male advantage I di I didn't know I was I I thought it was true until I got there I was like okay I was right yeah I thought I was it's the same with the party lifestyle. When I always told you guys it's not good, it's like my life's gone better. By not doing that, it's been enhanced. Okay, it's, been, it's, it's like I spoke to you guys about the great male filter, more so the 25 to 30 one, and then the obviously the percentages one. But this is kind of like a bridge in between where you see absolute clarity. Like before you start doing the percentages and at the end of the great male filter, 31 years old. What what stupid age? Do you know what I mean? 31. It, it just means nothing. Just sat in the middle of those two moments in your life. And I'm just looking around at it and it's being confirmed. The levels of depression, you would have no idea. You would have no idea, guys. For anybody my age who's watching this, they will tell you younger guys, it's off the charts. It's really bad. Okay, people my age. This is why it's the biggest killer of men under 50. Yeah, there's a few when you're 14, 15, our girlfriend broke up with me and whatever. That's more, you know, that's that's more, it's, you can never say it's a silly reason to commit suicide, but it's a reason that in 10 years time you would look back on if you didn't do it and go, God, why was I about to do that? Okay, so, but when once you get to the age that I'm at, a lot of people do it for serious reasons. You know, they're, 35 years old, life's gone nowhere, they're super depressed because drugs and alcohol has just destroyed their dopamine, they're out of shape because of that lifestyle, you know, it's never going to be as good as that ever again because, you know, if you're doing, if you're doing hard drugs 
52 weeks of the year for 10 years, you're probably going to be bored of everything at 31. You're probably going to sit there and be like, fuck me, I can't, I can't sit and read a book, I can't do this, I can't do that. Like, it's going to be difficult to do. And I'm seeing this in just record numbers. Like, it's, it's not everybody I know, but it's a good 50, 60, 70% of people. And I know that sounds stupidly high. Nobody's fucking happy. Everybody's lying about what they have. Everybody's... Oh, God, everyone's trying to play a character. Everyone's pretending it's a shit show. And I, I take zero... I take zero pleasure in saying that. Because I'm not that type of person. You know, I... We're, and here's the thing, guys, right? Quick little throwback. When I was growing up, when I was 20, 21, 22, and I first had ambitions of being where I am now and doing what I'm doing, I would tell people openly, because I was always the type of person who said, this is what I want to do. This is what I'm hoping to achieve. I got the piss taken out of me. Everybody laughed. Everybody was like, that ain't going to work. Oh, you'll get a real job soon. It's all, all the time people used to say that. And People used to say to me, oh, why are you doing all this just to make a normal wage? Because you're never going to make more and all this stuff. And at the time, I was like, getting angry. These fucking haters and all this shit. That American bollocks where everybody who says something about you is a hater and whatever. And it kind of it kind of were, but at the same time, you know, I shouldn't have been getting angry about it. Because now at 31, you can see those insecurities for what they really were. Looking back in hindsight, I can connect the dots. I'm like, oh, these people were going nowhere. They were doing nothing. They had no plan, no ambition and whatnot. They saw me trying hard, doing something, having a passion. And it was like, oh, fuck you. Stop trying to make yourself better than what we are. I've, I'm scared that you're going to leave me behind. Do you know what? 90% of people's like negative reactions in this world is fear. It always is. You know, and what do they say? Um... A dog that's scared will bark, will bark and bite, which is true. You know, if a dog's scared or startled, the first thing they do is they just panic and they start barking maniacally, just going crazy. I don't know if maniacally is the right word, but they just go crazy. And I see that I see that in humans too. They could see me going and doing something. I moved to Toronto and it was just, oh, the amount of shit. My, mom, my mom's told me to this day, she's like, the amount of people that used to be like, Oh, what's he doing? He's come back and get a real job, wasting his life out there. What's out there? It's pointless. What's he even doing? Like they'd be, they'd get aggressive over the confusion of not understanding what I was doing because it wasn't a normal nine to five job. But like I said, now, and I don't take pleasure from it. I'm not one of those people that's like, yeah, payback, bitch. I don't really care. I feel like when you carry that, you only poison yourself, which is, it's a bit Buddha, but it, but it's true. Um, but yeah, now at 31, I look back and I can kind of, you know, p people become more open. Basically is what I'm saying. As they get older, people will tell you, do you know what, mate? Back in the day, I did take the piss out of you. But here's why. I've learned this about myself. I'm really suffering now. Like I had a drug problem for five years, six years. It's, it's so many people. You, you, have, you have no idea how many people this is happening to. Like I said, it's minimum 50%. It's girls, it's boys, it's, it's whatever. It's, it's a shit show. And I've written a few things down here as to how, like, the, I can't tell you how I think people feel, but this is what people have told me. This is what I'm seeing. I know a lot of people that have got massive, massive depression and they're having to get injections and drugs put into their body because they just can't get excited about anything. And it's from going out every single weekend or two, three times a week and doing drugs two, three times a week for the last, like, 15 years of their life. So I've written down a few things. Number one was depression, which we've covered. Uh, the second thing is, did it all too soon with rash short-term decisions? This one's huge. So the girl that I'm seeing said to me the other day, like, so many people, we were sat at a cafe, and there were a load of people with, like, in gym gear, who had been for a run, get having a coffee with dogs. And she was like, look, I'm not saying it's these people because she's not ju judgmental. She was like, I'm not saying it's these people. She was like, but so many people look bored shitless with their own lives. And I was like, yeah, I've been back trying to bang on about this on the channel for so many years. But everybody goes, okay, I'm going to meet a woman. I'm going to get a good job. I'm going to get married, have kids, settle down, you know, get the mortgage and whatever. And then every day is just the same monotonous routine. Should we walk the dog? Yeah, should we get a coffee? Should we go home? Should we watch TV? Oh, is that show on tonight? Yeah, it's always on at eight on a Saturday. It's the same shit. 
And I'm seeing that now. So many people are just stuck in this rut where they're like, where's my life going? You know, people say midlife crisis. I think it's more like early stage of 30s where it hits people where they go, fuck. What, like, what am I doing? Where, where am I going? But they haven't got the financials to change that because they haven't made good decisions, which is why it always becomes a midlife crisis at 40 because you finally build up a bit of money and you can do it. But so many people at 30, you see like a major career change. I remember my first job, proper job, was as an estate agent. And one of the guys there was 31. And I remember him saying, I want to leave. And I was like, this is a great job. You're great at this. What are you talking about? I was only 18 at the time. And he was like, I need to get out. I need to do something different. I need my own, I need to be my own boss. I need my own power. I need something now. He's like, this isn't good enough for me. And that's the thing, in your teens and 20s, like picking up a bit of money, going out to town, the city, wherever it might be, having a few beers and going home with the prettiest girl is great. You know, and taking her on the weekend to the cinema for a couple of meals, it's great. How many times can you do that before it becomes boring? And it does. So then what do people do? They put a ring on her finger and they have kids and they get a dog. They're like, oh, that'll keep us entertained. And I feel as though so many people aren't, aren't living life based on the choices they're making. They're living life based on where they think they should be at certain checkpoints. It's the calendar effect that I told you guys about before. It's not an actual decision that somebody's making. They're going, oh, by 28, you're you're supposed to have have found somebody. Okay, you should be married by now. You're 30 years old. So people go, oh, okay, I'll go and get married. You know, you should have kids by now. Like you're getting a bit old. You don't have kids. The amount of times people said that to me and I'm like, I'm not doing that yet. I'm waiting for a while. You know, and people get these fake checkpoints pinned on them and they go, oh, I better go and do it then. And then they're the person with the dog and the kids. You see them everywhere. Walk around, open your eyes, have a little look. Just just people watch. They've got a dog, two kids and a wife and they're in the shabbiest clothes, which isn't a problem, but it just shows that their priorities are elsewhere. They're not worried about themselves. They're not focused on themselves which I think is a fault. I don't care what people say. I think it's a fault because you've lost kind of self-respect for yourself. You don't find each other attractive anymore. You've got no spare money for yourselves. Otherwise, you would get some nice stuff and you'd make an effort and whatnot and you'd look in control of your own life. But it's always like an old hoodie. And I know it's rude for me to say, or it's, uh, you know, brave of me to say, but, you know, hairs everywhere. They look all over the place. And you're like, come on, put some effort in. Do you know what I mean? Put some effort in in life. But they've done everything too soon. They've ticked all the boxes and they've got no money left because all those things that they've done has drained them and they just feel lost. Where's my life going? What am I doing? What's next? And that's, I think that's a massive persistent thought for a lot of people. What's next? I've done all the, the landmark checkpoints that everyone told me mattered in life. Now I'm bored shitless and I don't even know if I like this person. I'm starting to evolve and change as an individual 10 years on that's not really the woman for me. That's not the man for me. Like we're not compatible anymore. I actually, do you know what? I met her in a nightclub and she loved that shit. I'm more into like book festivals now and she's going to parties still. Shit. I probably did that too soon. And there's so many people in that boat where they're going, oh, I thought this was going to last forever. And that short term decision making is killing people, guys. Next is, this is huge. This could be the entire video. Lacking momentum and looking for answers. That on its own. Lacking momentum and looking for answers. That is what this video could be titled. That that should be the story of 90% of men's lives. Okay? Lacking momentum from the party lifestyle. From having five grand spare and going, lads holiday. Clothes. Car on finance. All this stuff, right? And then get into their 30s and going, what, like, I've got nothing going. Because look, truth be told, guys, and I've told you guys this before. Like, I I do make a lot of money. I have made a lot of money. But I don't have a lot. I don't have a lot at any given point. My bank account is very dry all the time. Because every time there's 20, 30,000, I'm like, right, back in. We need to do five more projects. Let's go. You know, the bare knuckle documentary alone is probably, it's going to be out very soon. It looks sick. Is going to cost us in total four and a half grand, I'd say. Four and a half grand with travel hotels. Yeah, probably four and a half grand. That's just one show. You know, then you've got like server costs, you've got the thumbnails, you've got all the stuff that comes with it. 
There's just, there's like even just getting food on the day. Do you know what I mean? For me and Alex and whatnot, and just it's, it's probably closer to five by the time we're done. That's just one project for a platform that cost me like two hundred fifty thousand in total to make, and I'm still paying bills for that platform today. You know, for maintenance and changing some things and and whatnot. So the point I'm making there is I don't have a shit ton of money in my bank account. I'm not sat on like 10 million at any given point. But why I'm not depressed and why I'm motivated is because I've got momentum. Okay, I might look at my bank account and go, fuck, we're down to 10 grand. We're down to like, we're below 20 grand again. Shit, like this is a problem. But, and I've told you guys, I've gone to minus in the last 12 months, I've gone down to minus three or four times. That's the cost of everything that I'm doing. It just is what it is. You self-fund everything. It's tough. Knew it was going to happen. I don't I don't care. It goes back up. It comes down. It is what it is. That's entrepreneurship. That's a real entrepreneurship that people won't tell you. But I've got momentum. I would rather be broke but have a crazy amount of momentum and things are evolving, things are moving forwards than have like 100 grand saved, but you're going, oh, what am I going to do with the money? Kind of, do I get a house? Do I, I don't know, do I invest? Some people told me stocks, crypto, like they just don't know. They don't know what their thing is. You know, you've saved up a bag of money and then you go and get a mortgage and you go, what now? Everyone told me this was great. This is what I had to do. You're just lacking momentum. You're just stuck in the mud. And that is what I see. I want to read that again, lacking momentum and looking for answers. And that's the second part of it, looking for answers. What do I do? Why do you think this men's lifestyle space is so popular? There's million. Why do you think Andrew Tate blew up? Because there's millions of men on this planet that are going, what do I do? I just need advice. I need a father figure. I need somebody to tell me what my purpose is in life. And I've made videos before and men lack purpose. They don't have a natural purpose. If you're a woman, your natural purpose, of course, you want to do other things in life and you have a lot to, you know, to strive for as women should. But you have one guaranteed purpose if you want, which is I could be a mother. That's a full-time job. You know, that's something that gets praised in society. It's something that keeps you occupied and motivated. Men don't have that. Oh, but men could be a father. And it's like, but it's, but it's different. Because when a man becomes a father, there's, there's a lot more pressure. There's massive bills. There's, that's tough. It's not a massive plus for a man. Not a massive plus. It's certainly not a get out of jail card. Nobody's going to pay your bills if you become a father. It's actually going to get worse. You have to be prepared to be a father. I think as a mother, you can learn on the job. I think as a father, you have to be prepared. You have to be, you kind of have to know a year or two in advance to be prepped for it, okay? And that's why there's so many guys looking for answers. They're purposeless. They don't know what to do. They don't know where they're going. They're looking around and they're saying, I did nothing in my teens and 20s. I spunked all my money. I wasted all my time. I thought I was going to live forever. Shit, now I'm a little bit more mature. I'm in a situation where I want things. I can't afford them. I'm going to have to either get back to the drawing board and go go again, which means I'm going to be 40 before things figure out, which leads to depression. And they're looking around, they're saying, what do I do? What can I do that's shorter? And they're just adding to the shit fire. And this is causing mass depression. All they ever knew was a party lifestyle. And I compare it to, which, oh, it's actually next on my list, the post-uni effect. So what happens is, I've got one above that, but let's go for the post-uni effect. So it happened to me. I didn't go to uni, but I came out of um, I came out of college, and I went and got the job at the estate agents. And I used to just work Wednesdays. That was fine. There was a half term where they made me work a whole week. They were like, "Can you come in for the whole week?" Yeah, sure. Went in on the Monday, and I remember Tuesday I went in. I was driving to work, and I was like, "Oh no, this is the same." And then I got home. My mum was out, and I was. I remember the Bruno Mars and Lil Wayne mirror on the wall was playing. I, I don't know why I remember that. And I, it was quite like a deep song. Do you know what I mean? It got in my head and I was sat there thinking. And I was like, fuck, this is me for the rest of my life. This is what you do. You just go to work, you get your money, you come home. And I was like, oh my God, this is horrendous. And it hit me straight away. Whereas for a lot of people, they think, okay, I can take that money, go out on the weekend, get drunk and find myself a wife. It hit me straight away. I knew what was coming. So... I would use that money wisely and I reinvested it when everyone else was out having fun, enjoying themselves and it sucked at the time. But now I get to live a life that most people can never dream of. You know, now I've now I've got the level of time and control over my own life that I always knew was possible. And a lot of people are jealous of that. A lot of people look at, look at that 
with envy, but I'm like, I'm not lucky. I chose to do that. I strategized the entire plan. But this is what I'm seeing now. Okay. And like I said, it's the post uni effect, the rest of my life effect. What do so many people do? They go to uni for three years. They come out of uni. Okay. Now you've got to go and get a job. No, I'm going to go traveling. I'm not ready to get a job yet. The reason being uni's a fucking DOS. It's the easiest lifestyle ever. You've then got you then go traveling where you don't have to go to work. You've got no responsibilities. It's, it's something that's celebrated by parents. Oh, I did uni and then went traveling. You know, I think it's great going to find them. It's shit. It's shocking. You've just done four years of sloppiness, laziness, waking up when you want, walking on the beach, taking drugs on the beach in Thailand and just, oh, I'm going to find myself. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to sleep with 50 different people on this holiday. I just need to learn who I am as a person, man or woman. It's not good. It plants bad seeds in your head. It plants terrible habits. And it's that post-uni effect where people go, I know I should get a job, but I don't want to become an adult yet. And this is what's happened to so many people. They don't want to be an adult yet until it comes a time where they realize, okay, I'm 30 years old, 35 years old, whenever it hits them, I want stuff. I need stuff. I want a long-term relationship. I want to have my own place now. I want a nice car that isn't breaking down all the time. They, you know, I want to look a certain way. I want to, I've let myself go. And they go, fuck, I've got no momentum. Where do I start? How do I do this? What, like, that's a place you don't want to be in. That is a place you don't want to be in. If you are there, this isn't to kill your hope. You can, you can, you can, you can change. It's, it doesn't take that long if you really go for it. For the guys that are younger, I promise you, come back to this video when... I say you're 15, 16, and there's like a house party or something. I went to house parties, so I'm not going to tell you not to go. But if you're not invited or, you know, somebody else is getting all the girls, don't worry. Just, just you can go home, focus on some other shit. Don't worry too much because I promise you, if you keep that lifestyle going, it leads nowhere. I'm on the other end of that now, watching. Everybody's on medication. Everybody's depressed. Everybody's trying to figure out how the fuck do I make more money? The cost of living's going up. How the hell am I ever going to afford a house? How the hell am I ever going to afford this and that? I've I've barely got enough money to pay my bills each month. It leaves me with three hundred pounds. How the fuck am I going to get out of this situation? That's rough. That's what lacking momentum and looking for answers is. That's 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 difficult. My next one is no long term life goals to get you out of bed in the morning. So because you've got no momentum and you're looking for answers, especially no momentum. I wake up in the morning and I go streaming platform. We've got, we've got, I've got videos to make. That's a good idea. I'll go and do that, but especially a streaming platform because it's like, it's a really good, legit business. You know, I'm seeing people every day. I'm networking with people. We're on set. We're filming. We're planning. We're being creative. It gets me out of bed in the morning. I know it's something that if I work on is going to reward me. For a lot of people, they're getting up and going, it's the same job I've had for the last seven years. I don't want to wake up. That's just a horrid situation to be in. And it comes from that non-stop party lifestyle. And it comes, it doesn't even have to be partying. I know guys that stayed in and smoked weed and just played video games and watched TV and whatever and masturbated to porn on a Friday, Saturday night. They're in the same boat. It's, it's, the trick is to catch it. The, the trick is to catch it early and go, okay, this feels nice. But I know if I continue doing this, I, can, I know where it's going to lead. That's a thought that goes through my head at least 10 times a week. Where I sit there and I go, this movie's great, I'm really into it, uh, but I'm never going to get those things that I wanted. This is never going to go where I thought it was going to go if I don't do the work now. And it pisses me off, but I do it anyway. And that I think that's the biggest difference. I think that's my greatest quality, is I do stuff even when I hate it. I, ju- I, just, I just do it anyway. Um, and the final one on here is a lack of savings or investments. So imagine that though, guys, like you've spent all your money on the party lifestyle. You spent it all on holidays. You've had relentless number of girlfriends and you've had holidays with them and stuff like that, nights out and whatever. You've bought clothes, you've bought cars on finance, and then you have a kid with somebody. Or even if you don't, like the cost of living is high enough anyway. But you have a kid with somebody and you go, that kid's going to cost me an extra £400 a month. I only have 500 a month for myself at the moment. So that leaves me with 100 pounds. 
So what am I going to do? Am I going to continue the same life? No, I'm going to have to move into a shittier house. Okay, so do I have a pool of cash to rely on? No. Okay, so how am I ever going to get rich? With £100 spare every month. Do I put that into an investment? How long is that going to take? And they're stuck. Do you see what I mean? That money has just been squandered. It's been wasted. It's not gone anywhere. It's not been used. And that's a 10-year period. That could have grown like crazy. You could have done something at that point. But they just let it slide away. And I'm telling you guys now to recap, I'm 31 years old. Pretty much everyone around me is the same age or older. They're struggling. There's a lot of people struggling. I hear stories from back in Stroud and that's where I grew up. And people tell me like, this person's done this. This person's had this happen. This person's got an addiction. This person's been kicked out of their house. This person's on depression medication. Like he's been, he's on suicide watch. And it's like, these were the party guys. These were the guys when you went out, were getting all the girls and they were having so much fun. And everyone was like, oh, he's the fucking man. He's hilarious. And when you saw him, he was happy and chirpy, cracking jokes at your expense, as in mine. And being like, oh, here he is, Elon Musk or whoever, Bill Gates, whoever was like the richest guy at the time. And I was like, oh, yeah, funny. And then like, are you not drinking tonight? And, oh, yeah, oh, Mr. Fitness over here. And it's like, yeah, it was a joke at my expense. But 10 years later, you can see why they were doing that. You can see why, you know, why those insecurities were taken from them and put on me. The message I want to give you guys is it's okay to be the lone wolf. It's okay to just focus on your own shit. I still do it today. I still do it today. I still think to myself, 31 year old me is a cool life. I'm enjoying it. But if I'm 40 and I'm worth hundreds of millions and I'm traveling around the world and I'm doing everything I ever wanted to do, with my kids and whatever woman I'm with, my family's safe, everything's paid for, I've got multiple homes around the world, I'm going to be so fucking happy. And that's another long-term persisting thought that keeps me going. And, you know, it's just small little things. It's like, there's a World Cup, there's a football World Cup in America in 2028, I think. I could be wrong. Uh, it could be 2026, 2028, some, it's one of them. I, I've always wanted to go to that. As soon as it was announced, like five, six years ago, I always wanted to go. I was like, that, I think it was longer than that when it was announced. I was like, I'd, I'd love to go. I'd love to be absolutely caked money-wise and have the ability to just go out to America and just go around and watch all the games and just really make a tournament of it and not have to care. What an experience in my life that would be. It's little moments like that where I think, okay, that'd be great. You know, I've got a two million pound villa in Marbella that I love. And I think, wouldn't it be great to buy that? There's a £2 million home in London, an apartment. I love it. I've got plans for it. I know what I want to do. If I go out on a Saturday and Sunday night, uh, Friday and Saturday night, and I spend £500 every single night and I'm getting drunk, and you know, like those visions fade away. Those ambitions start fading away, even at this age. You know, if I spunk that now on like a mortgage and I go and have two kids and I go and get married and whatever... None of that's ever going to come to fruition. And long term, yeah, I want a family. Yeah, I want to. I want to settle down with somebody. I think that would be beautiful. But at what at what cost if you do it too early? And that's the point I'm making. So many people did everything too early. They tick the boxes. They don't live their own life. They don't do things for them. They don't push it. They don't stretch it. They don't see how far it can go. They don't, like I said, tick a few boxes. And I find that sad because then you've got 50, 60 years of regret. And that's just disgusting. But I am in those years now of the aftermath of the uh, party lifestyle. And I'm standing on the outside and I'm looking and I'm like, I, I don't want to say I told you so, but fuck me. But I don't even have to because people are older now and they reach out to me and they see my videos and they're like, I fucked up. You were right. You know, it's not happening every day. I'm not going to turn it into some movie where it's like, you were right, Chris. But people say these comments and even if they don't, you can tell they're just like, fuck, I really messed up. And I'm telling you, it's bad. It's drug addictions, it's massive depression, it's dopamine depletion, just can't get excited about anything, don't want to get out of bed in the morning. Testosterone rock bottom, just gaining weight nonstop, poor diet and alcohol for the last 15 years. You know, split up with the mother and the kids won't see him because he's a loser and he's got no money and the parents are always arguing and he's always doing coke. Like, bad shit. Bad shit. Like, one of my friends potentially going to prison for some disgusting shit. And it's like, 
I'm seeing all that now. And the levels of depression now. Because people weren't forward planners. You know, 20, 30, 40 years ago, my mum and dad's era, I don't think it's a good idea, but they were like, you know, they got together, they got a house, they had some kids. Like I said, I don't think that's a good idea, but they were making investments. They were buying their first home and stuff. And they had plans. They had their own business. Whereas now everybody's plan is just go and get drunk, party, travel. And it's like, you're trying to run before you can walk. I, you know, even the rich kids though, even the rich kids are doing that and they don't have momentum and that's why they're depressed. Momentum is everything. Having a plan, something, something you can get your teeth into every day. I've got a whole fucking streaming platform to work on and it might take me 15, 20 years to get this thing where I need it to get. That's where you want to be, guys. That's where you want to be. You want something that is going to take you a long time, that you can be patient with, that you can have a life amongst it all. You know, because I'm going to enjoy the journey. I'm going to have memories around this whole plan. But what you do in life, your purpose is massive. And so many people are disregarding that and just seeing it as like, oh, it's a job in it. It pays for me to... That's not a purpose though. Going to the pub and being the fun guy. It's not a purpose. What I'm doing gives me something back. Each project we complete, every time we move forward, every time we upload something, every time I complete another monthly payment for the platform, which was like 16 and a half grand a month, I was like, we're closer, we're closer, we're getting there. Yeah, it's money that I can't spend on fun shit and all my friends are going on holiday and buying clothes. But do you know what I mean? I was like, it's getting there. It's going to get somewhere soon. That hope, that optimism, that kind of, like I said, something to sink your teeth into, that momentum, the reason to get up in the morning, that is life. That is what life is at the essence. And so many people don't know that. So many men don't have the purpose of the child and the family. It's, it's there. We're like, oh, it'd be nice. But it's not a persisting, like, I really want children, like women have. Like this burning internal clock that wants them to get pregnant. And I think a lot of guys are suffering because of this.